Today we're going to be playing one of the memeiest of meme decks, the jankiest combo that kicks off on turn four or five and does absolutely ridiculous things. And we're going to do this for fun, but we're also going to try to answer the question, how competitive is this crazy invasion of a Lara combo? Really, can we rank up with it as well as have some fun? Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be running the Alara combo deck and um, we're going to go through all the stats and everything at the end of how well this deck has done in testing and um, how well we do in these games in particular. I'm just going to run through really, really quickly the basic idea of this deck. Now, the two most important things we need are Bramble Familiar and Invasion of Alara. You've probably seen it before, but if we play Invasion of Alara, it automatically finds a Bramble Familiar and we can cast the um, Adventure side, which is the Fetch Quest, the Mill 7 cards, and put a creature enchantment or land from among the milled cards onto the battlefield. Ideally, we want to get a Cemetery Desecrator, which can then exile something of mana cost 7 from the graveyard, which can take 7 counters off Alara. Alara then transforms into Awaken the Maelstrom. We draw some cards, we destroy some things, we put some plus one counters, we uh, put an artifact onto the battlefield, and is that everything? Create a, topy, uh, create a copy token of something, put plus one counters. It does all kinds of things, and it's crazy. So our goal is to get five colors of mana on turn um, four or five, to cast this, and hopefully get that. Everything else in the deck is pretty much a six or seven mana um, crazy card that hopefully doesn't just do things in six and seven mana. We want to be able to do things like Leyline Binding, maybe for like one or two. Uh, Flesh Gorger will cost three. Um, Virtue of Persistence has two mana sorcery. Colossal Sky Turtle has a two and three mana channel ability. And Herd Migration can also um, discard itself. Uh, and find a land for two mana as well. So there are things we can do there. And we've also got this copy, this card, Turn the Earth, which is one that I haven't seen in a deck before, but I based this version on um, a version I saw on untapped.gg, the one with the highest win rate, and I thought I'd try to adapt it. So I've changed um, some of the other cards in the deck, changed the mana base a bit, and we're running this other card. Um, so to quickly cover what this does, um, we need to have no more than up to one other card that could be found by Invasion of Alara. So one other card that is mana cost four or less. So Turn the Earth is really good because it can return cards from our graveyard to our hand and gain us life, and it has flashback. So it's potentially four life, which we might need, depending on what matchup we have. But also, if our Bramble Familiars or our Invasion of Alara go into the graveyard, we can then put them back into our library and keep going. It can also do lots of other things like graveyard hate for reanimator decks, take out instants and sorceries from a mono blue gin deck, take out anything that people want to exile with their Agatha's Soul Cauldron for different combos. Um, there are various things we can do with that, and it's great to be able to do that at instant speed as well. Um, anything else we need to say about this? Um, Oh yeah, one thing is that when you find Bramble Familiar, one gets cast and the other one goes into your hand. So quite often you end up with these all in your hand or exiled because of the um, adventure or they're in the graveyard. So if you don't have any Bramble Familiars left in your deck, then Invasion of Alara can't find one. If you can put um, a Bramble Familiar back into your deck using Turn the Earth, which you often find with Invasion of Alara, then your next invasion can trigger again if you didn't manage to hit what you wanted to hit. So um, that's what we're, that's what we're going to go uh, explain right now. We've got 27 lands in the deck. I did have 28, but I put it down to 27 for now because I think that's enough. Let's see what we can do. Let's see how many games we win. We're just doing this for fun to see the craziest combos we can get on turn four or five, hopefully that early. But if not, um, we'll see if we can survive against mono red and whatever else the matchmaker decides to throw at us today. All right, well, let's get on with the games. Okay, right, so <laughs> we have not the best starting hand. To be honest, the best starting hand is having... Okay, never mind, that's one win. I'll take that. 
Okay, this is not a bad starting hand. We've got a few different colours here. We've got a couple of herd migrations and a sky turtle, so there's things we can do. A sunfall if the opponent is heavy on aggro creature deck, which would be um, Esper Legends or something right now, maybe. So we want to get something with green out first, and as much white as possible, just in case we draw a leyline binding or an untapped land so we can do herd migration straight away. <clears throat> okay, Sunfall now one more expensive, which is not ideal. Put down the uh, Proving Ground. Would have done the um, Rafine's Tower and it would have made Leyline Binding one mana. Probably won't come up. Okay, Flesh Gorger. So we need to have... Um, Two black sources to do a flesh forger next turn. And we can do a herd migration. We can still do the discard for two mana, even though Thalia makes things more expensive. Because that's not casting the instant or sorcery. So yeah. Hopefully we survive long enough to get to the Sunfall. We're gonna hit the land drops every time. They don't have much power out on the board right now. Don't have a Sheol Red yet, which is good. So we need to get pretty much everything. So it's probably not a specific one we need to get. I'll just get an extra white. Um, so we'll go with another tap land. And then get our first Flesh Gorger down. So they run counter spells. Not normally when you have Thalia. You don't normally see counter spells. We'll see. So, two more turns and then we can Sunfall. As long as Flesh Forger can hold off as long as possible, let them cast as many creatures as they want. Maybe if they get a Rafine and a Shield Red down, that'd be ideal. Denic. Nice to have a Denic that's going to get exiled instead of um, killed. And the Flesh Gorger actually holds them off pretty well. So we could do another Flesh Gorger here. But bearing in mind we're going to Sunfall next turn. Would be nice to keep a Flesh Gorger to cast afterwards. Especially as we're going to have 7 mana. I've got a good feeling that as soon as uh, we cast Sunfall, they're going to scoop. Probably looking for... That's kind of good to get in the graveyard. They're probably looking for Rafine, I guess. Or shield red. Perfect timing because I'm going to sunfall next turn. And I think I want to. No, I'm not. I could cycle that, but I'm not going to. <clears throat> and I can attack here. I don't want their Denic to die. Because I don't want it to go to the graveyard. So we'll see what they do. It's Menace, so they can't block with just Denic. And we want to hit Shieldred first. We're just doing this for the life gain. We gain three, they gain two. Very slight benefit to us. Also means that our um, Sunfall Incubator token is going to be um, one hour and toughness less. Because we've lost a creature. Maybe it's better just to Sunfall there instead of uh, attack with the um, Flesh Forger. 
that goes their whole board. <laughs> and are they going to keep going? We've got the Rafine. Good for them. We're going to get this down. Um, we could just attack, and we've got four more mana. Yeah, I think let's just attack with the Incubator token. See if we can get them to block. And so much we could do here. I'm just going to leave it for now. Because we could do Herd Migration, Flesh Gorger, or Bramble Familiar. I'm going to return the creature to its owner's hands and just get that shield red back away. They don't gain life from this. Discarding go for the throat because artifact creatures. Um, anything good in the graveyard? Flesh gorges, skitter. So if we do this, they're probably going to cast their Denic from the graveyard, because otherwise we're going to steal it. They probably want to cast the Shieldred instead. Or we can take the Skitter and eat the Denic from the graveyard. We could have just gone more aggressive and played out the Flesh Gorger, which also might have done it. And considering we have two Flesh Gorgers, a Herd Migration, and a Fetch Quest, we probably didn't need the uh, assistance, but I kind of feel like it's something they're less likely to be able to deal with. Okay, Shield Red. We do this to gain some life. No, they're giving up. Okay. Okay, again, going first. Good mana. We've got the green we need for herd migration. Uh, we don't have the black for flesh gorger. We could find it. And we have more than two white for sunfall. So we basically have, you know, options. Options for now. That's the secret to this Alara deck actually working, is having as much as you can possibly do before you get to Alara. Because otherwise you just won't survive to get to turn 5 or 6 um, to cast the things you want to cast. Okay, we've got a fast gruel aggro. And we deal with very fast aggro. Well, if we get to Sunfall, I think we can. That's a greater. So, not much point in casting um, that now. We'll go with the other Spara. Don't need it to be untapped now. We might need it later on. They haven't got the best start, because they didn't have a creature to cast on turn 2 to get the plus 1 counter from Kamano. Okay. Interesting. Though I haven't seen a, you know, a 3 color aggro deck like this before. 6. We'll migrate the herd. Looking for black. Then we can't get double black for that. We only have one basic of each colour. Um, okay, and then we've got... We also need to get red as well. Um, so we'll cast that now. And there's nothing else we can do. Right now. So we're going to Herd Migrate, find the mountain. Then we have all five colours. Uh, we can Sunfall if we need to, and then Alara afterwards, probably.
Oh, they're really uh, going with this sugar rush. Any other creatures? No, okay. So, we are going to migrate, find the mountain. There it is. Fifth colour acquired. Now, we could do Alara, but... Mm, I feel like this might be needed. We could have gone with Alara there. Alara tends to find a couple of creatures to put out, and we probably don't want to sunfall our own creatures. If I didn't use it then, I don't know when I would have used it. Okay. We'll see if it will do three damage in a moment. Another Alara, okay. Definitely have Alara. So, do they quit? First Alara doesn't do it, the second one will. Okay, here we go. Find the Bramble. Do the fetch quest. What do we find? Uh, let's go with Yatali. Because it might find a Desecrator still. All chance, but you know, maybe. Um, a play with Fire and a Flesh Gorger. Get the big Flesh Gorger and the Play with Fire goes to their face. And we don't need more land right now, so let's cry. So we don't, don't get to destroy Alara now. But we live long enough. What are they going to do? Sugar rush that, get to a 7. Let's just rage. It's not going to be enough to finish us off. Uh, next turn, we'll attack the Alara, probably with the Flesh Gorger. Well, with both, maybe, I don't know. The Flesh Gorger has Menace, so it can't be blocked by just one. Flip that, maybe cast the second one. As long as they can't boost the Thrill Seeker enough to finish us off, which I don't think they can. Plus two, gets to six. They do anything else, they wouldn't have the mana to. Uh, the word, fling it. Mm. Yeah, they're done. Um, this is a pretty bad start. I don't like to mulligan, but the Atalis don't do anything early on. Um, so let's keep this and. I feel like we'll have to put the Flesh Gorger away. Just because the Sky Turtles and the Herd Migration all do things early on. And the Flesh Gorger might not. Because we don't have double black. We've only got one black. Although we could find it with a Herd Migration and get the other black. So again, it could have gone either way. Maybe we put one Sky Turtle away. Have some variety. Bramble out now. Block. We want to make sure we have a land drop next time, so we maybe we'll do this then. Just send Squee back to slow them down a bit. We want to hit a land though. Perfect. Okay. So we could do that again, but. Maybe what I'll do instead is put the Bramble out now. Um, we can block Squee with the Bramble if it doesn't get bigger. We don't play with fire. Maybe they don't have a force land and they have to choose between Squee and a burn spell. You never know. Yep, there's the Squee. And No other mana available for burn spells. Put Squee out now. And we will keep looking for more land. 
So we've got green, white, we've got black, we've got uh, blue, we don't have red, so let's grab the mountain. And then all we need is, um, oh, okay, it's fine, so we'll do that now, find him, and maybe what we'll do is rely on casting the turtle, um, that's five, we need one more mana, don't we, six, okay, well let's just go with herd migration, let's get another black, at least we need the other black, the garden as well. So let's play garden. It gives us a six mana. And then we can either do a sky turtle, six five, or we can make three three threes. Well, like going wide is going to be better for us. Considering what this is looking like right now. So we can discard this, uh, return a card from our graveyard to our hand. So let's return a herd migration. And then we could go with the flesh gorger, which is also good. Let's put out a wide board. I have a feeling they can't deal with this. And then next turn the flesh gorger will will be over. Uh, maybe the Flesh Gorger would have been better. Although if they had one of those, what is it, Twisted Fealty kind of things, it'd just block everything. If they could, yeah, borrow the Flesh Gorger from me and be with it, then that would not be ideal. Just try and take out as many creatures as we can. We have a Monstrous Rage or a Witch Stalker Frenzy. Rage. I could have double blocked that. Another one? Okay. Feeling pretty good. They're on 20. I feel like they're going to scoop next turn. Strike. And we can go with Flesh Gorger or Atali. And the thing is, with Flesh Gorger. It could go wrong. They have one more Lightning Strike. Doesn't matter what I do. But we'll see. Maybe they've got it. Maybe I should have done the Flesh Gorger last turn. No, they're done. <laughs> okay. Ranking up. Sure, it's been fun. All right, opponent going first, but we potentially have every color and a Lara. So we're going to keep it. Okay, this is the fifth game. We've won the first four, which is actually, you know, pretty impressive. Oh, red. Okay. Another Sky Turtle is good. Because we're going to want to return creatures to the uh, opponent's hand, uh, which is a three mana option here. Oh no, that's not. Two mana option. We don't have the ability to... Um, oh, just rage. <laughs> we don't have the ability to have a second untapped land. No. So let's just go with the Proving Ground and hope they don't kill us this turn. We can start slowing them down a bit. Those Swift Spears get pumped up too much too fast, which is looking likely. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's nothing I can do here. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. Dead before my fourth land comes down. And the lightning strike. I mean, I can, I can gain some life, but it's not going to do enough. If that, if that was their last thing, you know, that could have saved me on one life, but way too fast. You can see my stats, like four games in a row, and that one, no chance. 
Right, okay, so we have two, three. It's not ideal. I really want to get this Alara down as soon as possible and do some crazy combos, so. We're gonna see. We have two proving grounds. We have a, a herd migration to find a third land. And then hopefully, if we get white, we're gonna have Leyline Binding that costs two. And then you just need to find one more red, black, or green, and then a blue. And we can also use Sky Turtle to channel early on if needed. And it's mono red again. But mono red that's slow, which I like. Mono red with no one drop. Like, that's not very common, is it? Okay. I'm ready for it. Mono red that has to think about their options too much. Okay, Felden. It's fine. Ah. So, um, if we get the white, it's still not going to give us a one mana leyline binding. So, I might do leyline binding now. Save me the two damage from Felden. Or if there's a squee, I'll take that out straight away. Oh, Godric. I think Godric out straight away. All land would be absolutely perfect. Okay. So we just need to find blue. Which I'm going to do with herd migration next. And then we have a turn 5 Alara. That's right, isn't it? We have black, red, white, and green. And they have a thundering Raiju. Which is doing 7 damage now. Okay. And let's get this mountain. Not mountain, island. Almost got the wrong one there. <laughs> Would have had it anyway. Okay, right. Turn 5 of Lara coming down. We have two Desecrators in our hand, which means we're unlikely to find one with the fetch quest. You never know. Um, oh no, just bindings and land. Okay. Not the best fetch quest ever. But next turn we'll have a Desecrator anyway. So that's fine. Yeah, we should have slowed down the damage enough to make a difference. Should have done that before combat. We've got an extra two damage in. Okay. Here comes a Desecrator. Desecrator is going to exile a 7 mana spell. We're going to take 7 counters off Alara. Casting Awaken the Maelstrom. We are drawing 2 cards. We are destroying the Felden. We are making a copy of the Desecrator. We're going to put counters like this. Second Desecrator enters the battlefield, takes something out of the graveyard. Take the Rainfelden. And then remove. Um, what should we do? Take away. Take away the Phoenix Chick, because we can block the adversary. So, not the best. Also, not bad. Remove their creatures. Got a board presence. A whole load of cards. And we can do another fetch quest next turn. Don't even need a Lara to find it. And they give up. I'm on a red. Done. And we're going first with three colours. Actually four, the bramble. So not too bad. As long as the opponent's not crazy mono red, which they look like they might be. So let's get um, a green down to start with. And we could do swamp and a familiar. And it's mono red again. <laughs> well, we do okay against mono red. Like 50 50 or something. 
maybe slightly better than 50-50, so I'm okay with that. As long as they don't kill us, we'll turn four. And we did go first, which is also helpful. So, Bramble Familiar or Leyline Binding? Go with the Familiar. Might be a mistake. Next turn, we should be able to do a second familiar and the proving ground, and the next turn after that, um, and the leyline binding. Next turn after that, flesh gorger. I'm not going to block with the bramble familiar. It might play with fire and kill it anyway. Shake, okay. No, I'm not going to block that. Alara, okay. No pressure. Um, so I can't do... Oh, can I do the Alara as well? So I haven't got an... I don't have an island. Okay. In that case, I'm not going to... Uh, up the other animal familiar. Hmm. Let's see what the best thing the Leyline Binding can hit would be. Maybe they have a Godric. Maybe they have a Squee. Maybe they just have a Swift Spear with a counter on it. Um, I mean, just say no blocks. Probably have a Monstrous Rage on oh, no, a Lightning Strike. Okay. Well, oh. in that case, I could have blocked one to save a damage. Save two damage. See if that's relevant. So let's get the Flesh Gorger out. So in theory, if I put out the other Alara, not Lara, put out the other familiar. I would have red, black, green. No, I'd still need to have blue. I still can't do a Lara yet. So maybe Flesh Gorger can slow them down because they used their lightning strike last turn. Maybe they don't have another one. Maybe they do. Uh, let's see. Wicked token on the Phoenix Chick. Kamano, so I can't block it. Okay. Oh, they're no, just attacking with the commando. Okay. Hmm. Go either way. The way I see it, that's really slowed them down. Uh, we have got green and green there, so I'm going to do the Bramble Familiar. And I'll do the Herd Migration now. Find the blue. Play the blue. We now have five colors and we have two alarms. And we're on 17 life. Only red is really slacking today. So don't forget, if you're liking the video, to uh, click like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, while I'm waiting for Mono Red to think about what he's doing. Um, yeah. Come on. Here we go, Swift Spear. Another one. Another Kamano. They're kind of stuck on land again. They've only got three land, which, to be honest, Mono Red can normally do okay on three land. Do I care about that? No, I, do you know what? I'm going to take it. I'm doing fine. I'm okay with it. Cool. So, here comes Alara. Alara is going to find the probable familiar. We've done this before. Um, fetch the quest. The turn the earth goes into my hand, which might be useful in a bit. And we've got not the best things again. We've got a flesh forger that's going to hold them off. Uh, no attacks. We can block with the flesh gorger this turn. We're on 11 life, so we're fine. Okay, they're gone. <laughs> I didn't get to flip Alara again. Come on. Alright, so, is this any good? 
As much as I hate to mulligan, that's pretty bad. Uh, that is, in theory, good. Um, do we need all that land? And what do we not need? Yes, but the flesh gorger away. Feels bad though. On oh, no red. Well, what have we done so far? Six wins, one loss. Um, I have a feeling this might be a bit too slow. Might actually lose another game here. But to be honest, it's been above um, expectations. Do this well. Get like, what, six and two if we lose this one? That's still 75% win rate, which is above the average for this deck. We'll talk about win rates at the end. Which won't be too far now, because we're almost dead. Wow. So we can gain three life and get a land. We can send something back to his hand. We can bind something. Well, in theory, what we could get in hit for, like, seven. Um, they might have a lightning strike or play with fire. They have a monstrous rage on taking that out, no? Okay. Well, that was fun while it lasted. Let's grab um, a swamp, and I should have done this before they did the combat damage, because then I could have gained life before they hit me. Not that it makes a difference, because, you know, the game's over anyway. Anyway, let's get on to the stats and talk about the deck in a bit more detail. Okay, and we're back now to go through the uh, deck in a bit more detail. So there's a few things that we could do differently in this deck. We could include some pain lands instead of the slow lands that we have here. There's a couple of times there where a pain land might have been better. Could have started gaining life a bit sooner, but to be honest, even with the pain lands, um, against Mono Red, being able to do a herd migration earlier. It might gain us three life a turn earlier, but we're going to lose life if that pain land makes a difference. So, yeah, I think there's been games in testing this when I've died because of the pain lands. Because when you want all five colors, you have a couple of pain lands, two or three pain lands out. You're taking a lot of damage every time you're doing things. So, yeah, I've got the slow lands here instead. Um, okay, so... Um, the best thing I can recommend for a deck like this, if you want to build it, I wouldn't necessarily recommend crafting this if you've got, you know, if you don't have a Lara already, that's four rares just to make this deck work. Uh, all these other ones you might already have anyway for various reasons. But like I said, you want to have things that you can um, act on early. So we want to have things like Virtue of Persistence with Adventure, Colossal Sky Turtle with Channel and Herd Migration with uh, its pretty much channel-like ability of discarding it and gaining the land. Um, and yeah, Flesh Gorger with Prototype. There might be other ones that you have that work well in this kind of deck, but to be honest, um, these are the ones that have worked the best for me. We only have one Attractor in this deck, because Attractor doesn't like affect other things uh, at the point where we need it. We want things to happen early. We might get Attractor with a Fetch Quest. Um, and obviously it helps us refill our hand. We don't want to get too many of them. We don't want to get them early on. Same kind of thing with a tar leaf. We hit it with a fetch quest. That's great. We don't want to have it in our opening hand. Um, and yes, like I said, four Bramble Familiars. Um, Sunfall is really important against those creature decks that go really wide, like we had with the Esper Legends deck. Um, you could go with um, something. I kind of feel like putting Elesh Norn in this deck, Mother of Machines, because we have so much that triggers when it enters the battlefield. I mean, Alara is an enter the battlefield trigger. If we had if we had Elish Norn out already, then it would find two fetch quests, which is crazy, which might find an Atali, which will trigger twice. It might find a Cemetery Desecrator that will trigger twice and maybe destroy both Alaras. Um, it could be pretty crazy, and it would shut down the mirror match and the... Um, the almost mirror match of the kind of normal Atraxa domain ramp deck um, because everything is enter the enter the battlefield like all their removal apart from some sunfalls daylight binding Itali, Atraxa all the big things they use um, 
they just won't do anything, right? So, Elish Norn, great for a mirror match. You could include it if you wanted to. Maybe even take out, I guess, an Atali. Although you kind of want it with the Elish Norn for the enter the battlefield trigger. Maybe take out one Cemetery Desecrator, but they're really good for removing the counters off Alara. So, I don't know. It's hard to find space for it. Uh, the only other thing in this deck that is different to the Alara deck I saw I don't know, a few weeks ago when it first became news is in, you have this one card slot where you can have an extra card that isn't Bramble Familiar that is four mana or less because Alara has to find two things that are four mana or less. You always want it to find a Bramble Familiar. So if you have two other cards, it might find those two instead and... Um, Alara kind of whiffs. So you have this slot where you can put one thing in that is less than four mana, and you want the thing that's going to have the biggest impact. Now there's different ways you could do this. You could have something like, um, what's that um, black, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a domain card, it's black, it's a sweeper, drag to the bottom. You could have that, it's four mana, each creature gets minus X minus X, um, so it's kind of like getting your Sunfall out a turn earlier um, when you have different um, basic land types. Although <laughs> we do have the basic lands in here. We do have the tri-lands as well. But we also have ones that don't have land types. So sometimes that won't work very well. You could go with a uh, Beanstalk, uh, which is not black, it's green. Uh, up the Beanstalk you could do because it's going to draw a card early on, which is good. And then every time you cast one of these other big things, you're going to draw an extra card. So you're always going to have enough cards in your hand. Some things are casting and some things aren't casting. So when we get the um, fetch quest, you're putting a creature enchantment or land from the build cards onto the battlefield. That's not casting it. But when you put Atali out, Atali exiles things from the top of your library and the opponent's library, you may cast those without paying their cost. So that is casting. So uh, yeah, channeling is not casting. Um, things being reanimated by virtue of persistence is just, again, putting a creature from the graveyard onto the battlefield. So yeah, that's not casting. Um, although when we have Invasion of Alara, and that flips for the sorcery, um, when a battle flips, you get to exile it, then cast it transformed. So that would be five mana. So up the Beanstalk would help you draw lots of cards and help you keep going. Um, but although we didn't get any games where Turn the Earth worked in or like was relevant in this um, in these like what eight games, it's been really relevant in a lot of the matchups I've had in testing. Um, the other thing you might just have is something like go for the throat because extra removal early on for one big creature is good. Although I don't think ever really have like one target you want to get rid of probably more likely that um yeah you'd want some something else to deal with multiple creatures so you could just have something like i don't know um path of peril or brotherhood's end if you really wanted to uh, just to sweep things um is there anything else i've seen people use i'm sure there's something else but i can't think of it right now but yeah turn the earth We'll get those Bramble Familiars from our graveyard and put them back in our deck so Alara can trigger again. But also, like I said at the beginning, we can stop things like Agatha's Soul Cauldron from doing its thing. It can, uh, in one of the um, testing games I had, the opponent was doing a Blossoming Tortoise Draconic Destiny Land combo deck. And they went to return the uh, Draconic Destiny from the graveyard to their hand and I was able to put it back into their library so they couldn't, um, they couldn't put it back into the hand, they couldn't cast it, they couldn't finish their combo. So it definitely helps us with gaining life, it helps us with graveyard hate, and it helps us with refilling our library with Bramble Familiars. So there's a good number of things. I think this does make a difference in the majority of games. But yeah, that's all we've got on this deck today. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this actually competitive? Um, I'm running at about a 58% win rate at the moment from about 30 to 40 games. Let's have a look, actually. Let's just double check. Have a look at MTGA Assistant. We are currently on 81 games with this deck. Actually, I've played a lot more with this deck than I thought I had. 58% with 81 
uh, games. We've done 17 games against Mono Red, one uh, eight out of nine, so not too bad, considering how slow this deck looks like it could be. 10 games against Domain, Mirror, or similar, um, and won 50% of those. Those are the biggest matchups we've had. Other than that, we've got Mono White, Esper, Bulgari, uh, Demir, Boros. We have all um, completely beaten to pieces. Mono Green beaten to pieces. And uh, Mono Black, four games. And we've won all of them because they just have creature removal downs and things that aren't necessarily relevant early on. Um, we have a 61% win rate on the play, 50% on the draw. So, and we've gone on the play a little bit more than on the draw. So that's the current stats with this deck after 80 games. It's not a huge sample size, but it's not a tiny one either. Um, and we've been ranking up a bit with it. So it's been fun to play. Uh, the combos are a bit crazy. It's expensive. If you have the cards, you might as well put them to use. Uh, let me know what you think of the deck in the comments below. And thanks for the watching. Thanks for watching this video to the end. And I will see you in the next one.